Okay, for the last uh, five lectures, we have been seeing uh, some basic concepts in multivariate analysis and also we have looked at uh, multivariate normal distribution and some basic results concerning multivariate normal distribution. What we will today uh, look at uh, are some simple problems on the concepts that we have covered so far. right? So, we look at uh, some problems as I said, the, so this is the first problem what we have uh, the variance covariance matrix of a three dimensional random vector x 1, x 2, x 3 is given by this uh, sigma matrix. Now, we have to find uh, the correlation matrix corresponding to this random vector and also later on we will find the correlation between this random vector, uh, random variable and this random variable derived from the random vector. Let us see how to look at this uh, solution. So, we have this sigma matrix. So, we are looking at the solutions one by one of the problems. So, the sigma matrix what we have is given by the following 25, 4, 9 on the diagonals. 1 2 th element is minus 2, 1 3 th element is 4 and this is 1. right? So, if we have this to be the sigma matrix, we are trying to find the correlation matrix. So, the correlation matrix of this x is what we are trying to find out. right? Now, if we have sigma matrix given by this, then this basically is the variance of the first component, this is the variance of the second component and this is the variance of the third component. This is a covariance between the first and the second component, this is the covariance between the first and the third component and this is the covariance between the second and the third component. Now, this is a symmetric matrix, so no need to write the lower diagonal elements out here. So, what we will first find out is this matrix which is going to hold. So, this is the first entry which is sigma 1 1, this is sigma 2 2, this is say sigma 3 3 and from this variance covariance matrix, this is nothing but this actually is the diagonal matrix. So, I will just uh, write it as a diagonal matrix. So, that this V let us define that to be the diagonal matrix which is holding the variance terms. So, this is the diagonal matrix with elements as 25, 4 and 9. Right? Now, the correlation matrix of x as we had seen in basic concepts of multivariate analysis, this is going to be v half inverse sigma v half inverse. So, this basically is going to be this sigma matrix multiplied pre multiplied by v half inverse and post multiplied by v half inverse. So, what do we get? We get from the sigma matrix the following. Now, this is a correlation matrix. So, the three diagonal entries would be correlation between x 1 and itself, x 2 and itself and x 3 and itself. So, all of them are ones. Now, the correlation between x 1 and x 2 is going to be given by this element. So, that is minus 2 which is the sigma 1 2 element out here that divided by root over sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2. So, this is going to be 5 multiplied by 2 which is the standard deviation of the x 2 element. Similarly, the 1 3 th element is the correlation uh, correlation between x 1 and x 3. So, that is going to be given by 5 this multiplied by the square root of 9. So, that is 3. Right? Now, similarly this element what we are going to get is the correlation between x 2 and x 3. So, that is given by 1 which is the covariance what we have out here and then the standard deviations of x 2 and x 3 which is 2 into 3. right? So, this is our correlation matrix uh, for this particular random vector x 1, x 2, x 3 right? simple. Now, the second uh, problem uh, second part of the problem was to find out. So, we have obtained uh, this particular term here and then we are trying to find out the correlation coefficient between x 1 and x half of x 1 plus uh, x 2 plus x 3. right? So, let us see how to do that. So, we are trying to find out in the second part of the problem, this was the first part of the problem. So, the correlation between x 1 and x 2 by 2 plus x 3 
by 2. So, this would be given by covariance between x 1 and half of x 2 plus x 3 this divided by under root of the respective variances. So, this is variance of x 1 and this is variance of half of x 2 plus x 3. Right. So, we will actually compute this term, we will compute this term, this term of course, is given directly from the variance covariance matrix and we will derive what is this in the next slide here. So, let us look at what is covariance between x 1 and x 2 by 2 plus x 3 by 2. So, this is covariance between x 1 and x 2 by 2 this plus the covariance between x 1 and x 3 by 2. So, this is half of covariance between x 1 and x 2. Let us see what is that covariance between x 1 and x 2. So, the covariance between x, x 1 and x 2 is this element here minus 2. So, we will have this as minus 2 then plus half of covariance between x 1 and x 3 what is that. So, covariance between x 1 and x 3 is this element 4. So, this is covariance between x 1 and x 3 and that is equal to 4 right. So, whatever is that. So, this is minus 1 plus 2. So, this is equal to 1 right. Now, the next thing that we need to compute is variance of this particular element. So, that we are now looking at what is the variance of half of x 2 plus x 3. So, that is equal to 1 upon 4 variance of x 2 plus x 3. So, that is equal to variance of x 2 plus variance of x 3 plus twice covariance between x 2 and x 3 right. So, what are these entries from the variance covariance matrix variance of x 2 is what we see as 4 and variance of x 3 is what we see as 9. So, that this is 4 plus 9 plus 2 times covariance of x 2 x 3 what is that covariance between x 2 and x 3 is 1. So, that this is 2 into 1. So, whatever that comes one fourth of this plus 2. So, this is 15 by 4. So, we have the constituent elements to compute this particular correlation term. So, that what we finally get this would imply that the correlation coefficient between x 1 and half of x 2 plus x 3 that is or that is given by the covariance of this term which has turned out to be 1 and then we have variance of x 1. We have variance of x 1 that is given by 25. So, that this is 25 multiplied by 15 by 4 into half and that is what is the correlation coefficient between the two random variables derived from the random vector. So, that solves the first problem. Let us now look at the second problem. So, the second problem is this that we have got x the multivariate random vector which is p dimensional with a mean vector as mu and the covariance matrix as sigma. We are trying to find out what is the covariance matrix of the random vector which is derived actually from this random vector p dimensional random vector x and z is given by these k components each of these c j's belong to r to the power p. So, let us see how to find out this particular uh, solution for this particular problem. So, we have x the p dimensional random vector with expectation of x vector given by this mu vector and the covariance matrix of x given by sigma matrix and we are looking at a new random vector z which is given by c 1 prime c 1 prime x c 2 prime x 
and we had that as c k prime x. So, the last element entry is c k prime x. So, this is c k prime x. So, for this particular random vector, which is what we are now trying to find out. Now, we try to find out what is basically the covariance between any c i and c j. So, let us try to find out covariance between c 1 prime or rather in general c i prime x and c j prime x. Right. So, that from the definition of covariance of these two quantities is going to be c i prime covariance matrix of x which is sigma that multiplied by this c j. Right. So, we will have this for all i j to 1 to up to k. Right. So, the covariance matrix of this z vector is going to be given by this would be the covariance between c 1 prime x and itself. So, that this is going to be c 1 prime sigma c 1 and this would be the covariance between c 1 prime x and c 2 prime x. So, that would be given by c 1 prime sigma c 2 and the last entry would be the covariance between c 1 prime x and c k prime x. So, that would be given by c 1 prime sigma c k. This entry would be c 2 prime sigma c 2 and this would be the covariance between c 2 prime x and c k prime x. So, that this would be given by this term and the last entry would be the covariance between c k prime x and itself. So, that that would be given by c k prime sigma c k. Right. So, that this basically is what we are trying to find out. So, this is the k dimensional vector what we have because this is the first entry, this is the second and this is the kth entry and we have all these c i s belonging to r to the power p confirming to this particular random vector which is x. Right. So, this is what is the covariance matrix that we wanted to derive for this new random vector q dimen uh, k dimensional. Let us now look at the third problem, uh, the second problem is done. So, we are looking at the third problem, we are trying to find out or rather establish the fact that determinant of s is equal to the product of s i i i equal to 1 to p and then the determinant of r what are these s is the sample variance covariance matrix and r is the sample correlation matrix. So, let us look at how to establish this particular fact what we are trying to prove is the following that s is equal to s 1 1 s p p into r right, where s is the sample variance covariance matrix and r is what we have as the sample correlation matrix right. Now, what do we know about the relationship between uh, the sample variance covariance matrix and the correlation matrix? This is what we know. So, we have the relationship that r the correlation matrix can be derived from the sample covariance matrix in the following way that we take s the sample covari variance covariance matrix and then multiply that with v half inverse and post multiply by v half inverse and what is this v half? v half is the diagonal matrix holding the co uh, variance terms. So, that that is diagonal s 1 1 s 2 2 s p p right. So, this is the p dimensional diagonal matrix what we have as v half. Now, this step number 1 1 would imply that if we now this is a non singular matrix. So, what we have is multiplying by v half pre multiplying by v half and post multiplying by v half of equation number 1 we will have this to be given by that is equal to s right. Now, taking determinant 
what we will be having is that determinant of v half into determinant of r into determinant of v half that would be given by determinant of this s matrix. That is what we have now note that determinant of this v half matrix I am sorry actually this is not v half yet this is just the v matrix. So, the v matrix is just the diagonal with uh, s 1 1 s 2 2 s p p as its diagonal entries and then we raise that to v to the power half. So, if we look at determinant of v to the power half what will happen to this is s 1 1 to the power half s p p to the power half. So, we will have this as a product i equal to 1 to p s i i to the power half that is what is determinant of v half and this is determinant of r and then this is once again the same as what we have already obtained. So, this is product i equal to 1 2 up to p s i i to the power half that is equal to determinant of s. So, this would imply that determinant of s is equal to product or rather just uh, the elements s 1 1 s 2 2 s p p that is product of s i i is simply that multiplied by determinant of r as was to be proved. Right. So, we prove this particular relationship in this problem. Let us now move on to the fourth problem. So, the fourth problem basically is this that we have a random vector x which has expectation vector as mu covariance matrix as sigma y is another random vector with uh, uh, mean vector as delta and covariance between x and y given by sigma x y. We are trying to show that expectation of y x transpose that is equal to sigma x y transpose plus delta times mu transpose. Let us see how to prove that this particular result. So, what we have is the following that uh, expectation of x vector is equal to mu vector and the covariance matrix of x vector is sigma matrix. So, this is for the random vector x and let us have for the random vector y as expectation of y equal to this delta and the covariance matrix of y is say given by sigma y and what we have also is expectation or rather the covariance between x and y is denoted by sigma x y. So, under these given conditions what we are trying to establish is the relationship of expectation of y x transpose and the given quantities. So, we are trying to have an expression for expectation of y x transpose that is what was the problem. So, we are trying to get to this. So, this is equal to what that is the question. Now, if we have this particular term to be given. So, this is what this is equal to expectation of x minus mu into y minus delta transpose. Now, if we write covariance between y and x vector, so that that would be given by from the definition of covariance between two random vectors that is going to be given by y minus delta into x minus mu transpose. So, this covariance between y and x which is given by this is nothing, but just the transpose of this particular quantity and thus this is equal to sigma x y transpose. So, let us keep this sigma x y transpose as it is sigma x y transpose that is given by y minus delta into x minus mu transpose. Now, let us now open up this particular thing here and take expectation term by term. So, that this is y minus delta x transpose minus mu transpose. So, we will have four terms here which is expectation of y x transpose this minus expectation of y mu transpose this minus expectation of delta times x transpose this plus expectation of delta mu transpose. Right. So, we keep the first term as it is expectation of y x transpose this minus this is a non stochastic part. So, this will just be expectation of y into mu transpose. So, that is delta into 
mu transpose this minus by the similar logic this is delta times mu transpose this plus this is non stochastic completely. So, this is delta times mu transpose. So, what we have is one of these terms cancelling out and this thus is equal to expectation of y x transpose minus delta times mu transpose. So, this would imply this would imply that expectation of y x transpose is sigma x y transpose this plus the term that we had here which is delta times mu transpose and this is precisely the result that we were trying to prove. So, we have this particular result being proved. Let us now move on to the next problem which is problem number 5 this year. So, we have this three random vectors x 1, x 2, x 3. These are three observations from a three dimensional distribution and we denote by this script x the data matrix holding the three as the three column vectors and then we will be deriving all these things. So, let us first write what we have here. So, let us do the solution of problem number 5. So, we have this x 1 vector given by minus 1 3 minus 2 minus 1 3 minus 2 this x 2 vector just uh, see what these elements are. So, this x 2 vector is 2 4 2. So, this is 2 4 2 and the third observation vector is what we have here is 5 2 3 5 2 3 and then using these three as the three observation vector we form the data matrix which is a 3 by 3 data matrix which is holding this x 1 x 2 and x 3 vectors. So, this is what this is this minus 1 3 minus 2, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 3. Right? Now, given this particular information, let us see what the problem is asking for the observations for this is the first part of the problem. For the observations on variable x 1, find the projection on 1, 1 the column vector 3 dimension each element being 1. So, that this is what we are trying to get in the first. Now, this can also be written in the following way that this is y 1 transpose y 2 transpose y 3 transpose. What is y 1 transpose? y 1 transpose is having these 3 as the 3 entries and what are these 3? These 3 are the 3 observations corresponding to the first component in the three observations. So, this is the first component uh, first component value in the first observation x 1, this is the first components value in the second observation and this is the sec third value of the first component in the third observation vector. So, this minus 1, 2, 5 are the three observations that we that is what we have corresponding to the first variable and we are trying to find out this is the problem to find out the projection. Uh, for the observations on variable x 1 that is the first row of that script x matrix we are trying to find the projection of that on one vector. So, we are trying to find out this projection of this y 1 on this one vector which is 3 by 1. So, where this one vector is nothing but it is holding the three entries as 1. So, that that would be given by y 1 prime 1 divided by 1 prime 1 this multiplied by this 1 vector and this is what this is going to give us x 1 bar because 1 transpose 1 is 3 and this y 1 transpose 1 is going to give us the sum of all these three observations corresponding to the first variable and 
thus this is nothing but x 1 bar 1 and for the given problem x 1 bar is 5 plus 2 plus minus 1 divided by 3. So, that is the mean. So, 7 6 divided by 3. So, that is 2. So, that this is the vector containing all 2s out here. Right. So, this is what is the projection of y 1 on the column vector 1. Let us see what is the second part of the problem. Find the deviation vectors and link them with the standard sample standard deviations. So, what is that we are trying to find out? We are trying to find out deviation vector d 1, d 2 and d 3. What are these quantities? Now, what is this d i? d i is going to be given by y i minus x i bar times 1. So, it is basically calculating the deviation of each of the observations from the corresponding mean of the variable that is collected from the three observations that is what we have. So, let us look at what those quantities are. So, this d 1 is going to be given by y 1, y 1 is this vector. So, it is minus 1, 2, 5 that minus the mean vector which is what we have obtained here which is 2, 2 and 2. So, that is the first deviation vector. So, that the elements are this is minus 3, this is 0 and this is 3. Right. So, this is what we have as the first deviation vector. In a similar way, one can obtain what is the second deviation vector, third. So, that this d 2 will be given by this y 2 vector that minus x 2 bar x 2 bar times this 1 vector. And what would that be equal to? From the data matrix this y 2 prime is 3 4 2 this is 3 4 2 this minus x 2 bar x 2 bar will be computed from these three observations. So, that this is 6 plus 3 9, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So, what we have is x 2 bar. So, that what we have is x 2 bar is equal to 3. So, using that we will have this x 2 bar 1 vector given by this. So, that the d 2 deviation vector is given by 0, 1, minus 1. Right. So, similarly one can also obtain this d 3 in the similar way as what we have obtained for d 1 and d 2. Right. Now, that is what is the computation of the deviation vector. Now, the second, uh, second part of this particular problem was to link these deviation vector with that of the sample uh, variances. So, what is that? Let us illustrate that using this first deviation vector. The first deviation vector is minus 3 0 3. So, this d 1 vector minus 3 0 3 minus 3 0 3. Now, what we know about the square of the norm of this these deviation vectors is the following that d 1 prime d 1. Now, these are the deviation vectors that is x i j minus x i bar those are the entries for the deviations. Now, when we are looking at d i prime d i then we are basically looking at the sum of squares of these entries and that is what is going to lead us to n minus 1 s i i the sample variance corresponding to the ith component. right? So, that if we use this particular thing uh, for this deviation vector what we are what we are getting is d 1 prime d 1 is going to be given by 9 plus 9 that is 18. So, it is the square the sum of square of the entries for this d 1 deviation vector and that is going to be given by n minus 1 what is n here n is the number of observations. So, that is 3 minus 1 2 that times s i i. So, this would imply that the sample variance I am sorry this would be s 1 1 because what we are looking at is corresponding to the first observation. 
first uh, variable rather so that this is our s 1 1. So, that what we have is this s 1 1 s 1 1 is going to be given by 9 right. So, similarly one can obtain s 2 2 and s 3 3 can be obtained using the deviation for s 2 2 we will be using the deviation vector d 2 and for the s 3 3 element we would be using the d 3 deviation vector right. So, this is not the transpose. So, this is just the vector itself. So, that completes the second part of this problem. In the third part of the problem we are trying to calculate the angle between the deviation vectors d 1 and d 2. What we are now trying to find out in this c is the angle between d 1 and d 2. Now, what are these vectors uh, d 1 and d 2? d 1 was given by this minus 3 0 3 minus 3 0 3 and d 2 the deviation vector was given by 0 1 minus 1 0 1 minus 1 0 1 minus 1 right. So, we are trying to find out what is the angle between d 1 and d 2. So, let theta be the angle between d 1 and d 2, then what we have is cosine of that angle is given by d 1 prime d 2 that divided by d 1 prime t 1 into this d 2 prime d 2 that under root right. Now, you can compute what is d 1 prime d 2 using d 1 prime d 2 can be computed from this d 1 and d 2 d 1 prime d 1 we have already computed that that is if I remember correctly was 18 and d 2 prime d 2 similarly can be computed from out here and then whatever it comes is the cosine of this suppose this turns out to be a. So, this would imply that theta the angle between the two deviation vectors d 1 and d 2 is cosine inverse of a say what is the numerical value here that is what is going to come using this d 1 and d 2 vectors. Let us now move on to the next part of the problem. Let us see what is that we are trying to find out here. So, using the deviation vectors we are trying to find out this, this basically is the deviation from respective observations. So, script x minus x bar 1 transpose and we are we would also like to check whether it is of full rank. The reason why we are trying to check it is full rank would be obvious. Let us, uh, we have already uh, computed d 1, d 2 and d 3 similarly. So, we are trying to find out this x minus x bar 1 transpose. So, this x x matrix is the data matrix which actually what we have was minus 1, 2, 5, this was 4, uh, 3, 4, 2, minus 2, 2 and 3 right. This minus x bar 1 transpose. Now, x bar is holding the 3 means of the 3 uh, variables. So, the first variables mean as what we have computed was uh, 2, the second variables mean this is sum of these divided by 3. So, that is was equal to 3 and the mean of the third variable uh, is equal to 1. So, that this x bar 1 transpose matrix is going to be given by 2, this is the mean for the first variable, then the mean for the second variable and then the mean for the third variable which is all 1s out here right. So, that this is going to be given by the difference of these two. So, that this is I will just write it what is this. So, this is minus 3 0 3 this is the first deviation vector d 1 and this is the second deviation vector as what we had computed. So, you see that it is basically going to hold the deviation vectors in the three rows and similarly the third deviation vector is minus 3 1 2. So, this 
is what we have at one stroke the all the three deviation vectors d 1 prime d 2 prime and d 3 prime right. Now, in order to compute the sample variance covariance matrix, we can simply use this particular matrix that is what we have computed, because the sample variance covariance matrix is going to be formed from these deviation vectors d 1, d 2, d 3. What is that? If we have this x minus x bar 1 transpose given by this d 1 transpose, d 2 transpose and d 3 transpose, then what is this matrix x minus x bar 1 transpose times x minus x bar 1 transpose transpose. So, this is this multiplied by the transpose of this. So, that what now we have is d 1 d 2 d 3 transpose and then the transpose of this which is d 1 d 2 and d 3. What is this going to lead us to? This is going to lead us to d 1 prime d 1 d 1 prime d 1 is n minus 1 times s 1 1. This is d 1 times d 2 this is d 1 times d 3 this is d 2 prime d 2 this is d 2 prime d 3 and this is d 3 prime d 3 right. Now, this is n minus 1 times s 1 1 this is n minus 1 times s 1 2 and so on. So, that what we have is n minus 1 times this matrix which is s 1 1 s 1 2 s 1 3 this is s 2 2 s 2 3 and this is s 3 3. Now, both these matrices are symmetric. So, no need to write the lower diagonal part of this particular matrix. So, this is what we have. Now, what is this? This is the sample variance covariance matrix that is this is n minus 1 times this s matrix right. Now, whether this s matrix is going to be singular or non singular will depend on whether this matrix what we have computed is singular or non singular and that is basically the point why we are trying to see whether this matrix x minus x bar 1 transpose which is holding d 1 prime d 2 prime and d 3 d 3 prime as the three row vectors whether that is of full rank or not. Let us see if we can see that from here this s matrix is going to be given by uh, is given already by this particular term out here and if you look at this three columns here clearly it is rank deficient because this mat this one this third column minus uh, plus the first column is going to lead us to uh, let me just write it fresh here. So, that what we have is this uh, x minus x bar 1 transpose matrix is minus 3 0 3 0 1 minus 1 minus 3 1 2 right, where this had this as d 1 prime this as d 2 prime and this as d 3 prime. So, we have these three vectors. Now, if we look at this matrix and try to find out rank of x minus x bar 1 transpose whether that is 3 or not whether that is full rank or not this is what is the question. So, as we clearly see from here that this d d 3 vector which is minus 3 1 2 that is equal to say minus 3 0 3 
this which is d 1 and then d 2 is 0 1 minus 1 right. So, this is minus 3, this is 1 and this is 2. So, what is this? This is my d 1 vector and what is this? This is my d 2 vector and hence we have d 3 vector this is just d 1 vector and d 2 vector not their transposes. So, this is d 1 vector plus this d 2 vector. So, if we have in this particular matrix one row being actually redundant. So, that is linearly dependent on these two rows. So, this would imply that x minus x bar 1 transposes not of full rank. So, if this is not of full rank, so will be this S matrix and S matrix will not be of full rank hence. So, this would further imply that S is not of full rank. So, this S is going to be a positive semi definite matrix, because there will be one eigenvalue which is 0. Let us look at the last part of this particular problem to find out the generalized sample variance and the total sample variance. So, what are those quantities that would be derived from the S matrix, where the S matrix is given by this particular term here n minus 1 times that. So, using the deviation vector the S matrices can be computed. The S matrix after taking the products uh, d i prime d j would turn out to be the following. I will just write that here. This is this comes out to be 18 minus 3 15 2 minus 1 14. So, this is just the deviation terms here. So, this is what we have n minus 1 times s. So, this is d 1 prime d 1 and this is d 2 prime d 2 and so on. This is d 1 prime d 2, this is d 1 prime d 3, this is d 2 prime d 3 and this is d 3 prime d 3. n minus 1 is 2. So, this would imply that this s matrix is this divided by 2. So, this is 9, this is 3 by 2, this is 15 by 2, this is 1, this is 7 and this is minus half. Right. Now, we are trying to find out what is the generalized inverse and the total sample variance. So, generalized sample variance is nothing but determinant of this. Now, we do not need to compute explicitly the determinant of this, because what we have already proved is that S is not of full rank. So, the determinant is going to be 0. And then, uh, we are also trying, trying to get the total sample variation. This is what we had earlier defined in our theory classes the to total sample variation is going to be trace of this s and that is 9 plus 1 plus 7 equal to whatever. So, we have the generalized sample variance from this and also the total sample variance from this. That completes this problem number 5. Let us now move on to the next problem. Problem number 6 is this. So, we have in problem number 6 that x is having the following quantities. This is the mean vector corresponding to x. This is the variance covariance matrix of this four dimensional random vector. If we make uh, two sub vectors x 1 as x 1 x 3 and the second sub vector as x 2 x 4 and we consider a vector a which is 1 2 and this as another matrix. We are trying to find out covariance between a x 1 and uh, covariance of a x 1, covariance of b x 2, covariance between a x 1 and b x 2. That is the first part of the problem. Let us uh, do the problems one by one. Let us move on to this. This is problem number 6. We have x a four dimensional random vector such that expectation of x is given by that mean vector. 
I will have to see what is what are the entries there 4 3 2 1 this is 4 3 2 1 and we had the covariance matrix of this x a 4 by 4 matrix. So, the entries I will have to just see what these entries are I have to write these entries. So, these are the entries here I will just write it from here these are the entries this is 3 0 2 2 this is 1 1 0 this is 9 minus 2 this is 4 the rest of the elements can be obtained by symmetry. So, this is what we have now under this these conditions we had to define the first sub vector x 1 which is x 1 and x 3 and the second sub vector x 2 as x 2 and x 4 right and we had defined a to be a row vector having the entries 1 and 2 and b the 2 by 2 matrix asymmetric 1 minus 2 and 2 minus 1 right. Now, under these are the given conditions. So, under these conditions we are first trying to get what is covariance of a x 1 right. So, covariance of a x 1 is going to be given by a covariance of this x 1 sub vector times a transpose that is simple why is that equal to that because this is expectation of a x 1 minus a times expectation of x 1 then the transpose of this particular element here right and this is what we will be getting finally. So, we need to find out what is covariance of this a uh, covariance of this x 1 sub vector. So, x 1 sub vector is given by x 1 x 3. So, that what we can actually see is the following let us try to see what is covariance of this x 1 sub vector. Now, what are the entries that this covariance of x 1 is going to hold? It is going to be variance of x 1. So, from here the variance of x 1 is 3 and then the 2 to th element would be variance of x 3. So, the variance of x 3 is 9 and then the off diagonal elements of this covariance matrix would be given by the covariance between x 1 and x 3. What is that? This is this entry. So, covariance between x 1 and x 3 is 2. So, that the covariance between x 3 and x 1 would also be equal to 2. So, this is the covariance matrix of uh, x 1 sub vector. So, what we will be having this as 1 2 3 2 2 9 1 2 right. So, this is what is the covariance of a x 1. Now, the second part was to find out the covariance of b x 2 vector here that would be b times covariance of x 2 sub vector that multiplied by b transpose. Now, this would require covariance of this x 2 sub vector the way that we had obtained this covariance of x 1 we can similarly obtain this what is this going to be x 2 is the sub vector which has x 2 and x 4 as the two, two variables. So, that the first entry would be variance of x 2 which is 1 then variance of x 4 is 4. So, that this is 4 and then the covariance between x 2 and x 3 will be the off diagonal element. So, covariance between x 2 and x 4 is 0. So, that this is what is going to be the covariance matrix of the x 2 sub vector. So, we can actually plug in that and get what is covariance of this. So, this B matrix is written somewhere here this. So, that is 1 minus 2 2 minus 1 and then the covariance matrix of this x 2 sub vector is 1 0 0 4 and then this is the transpose of this. So, that this is 1 2 minus 2 minus 1. So, this 
is what the covariance of B x 2 component. Let us move on to the next part, what was the next part to find out the covariance between A x 1 and B x 2. So, this is the covariance between A x 1 and B x 2. So, the covariance between A x 1 and B x 2 is going to be given by A covariance between x 1 and x 2 times this B right. Now, A, B are known things. So, what we need to find out is covariance of this x 1 and x 2 sub vector. Now, what would that be given by? Now, remember that this x 1 has entries x 1 and x 3 and this x 2 sub vector has entries x 2 and x 3. So, the covariance matrix of this x 1 and x 2 would be given by the following that this is the first entry would be covariance of x 1 with x 2, the second would be covariance of x 1 with x 3 and this is covariance of x 3 with x 2 and this is covariance of uh, this entry is not x 3, this is x 4. If I remember correctly, this is uh, yeah x 1 is x 1 x 3, x 2 is x 2 x 4. So, that this is x 2 and x 4. So, that this would be actually x 1 x 1 x 2 x 1 x 4. So, this is x 3 x 2 and this is x 3 x 4. So, from the sigma matrix we will actually look at what is covariance between these components. So, if we look at the sigma matrix all these entries this is covariance between x 1 and x 2. So, that we will have the first element here as 0 then covariance between x 1 and x 4 x 1 and x 4 would be 2 here covariance between x 1 and x 4 is 2 covariance between x 3 and x 2 x 3 and x 2 would be same as covariance between x 2 and x 3. So, that is 1 here. So, the next entry is 1 here and covariance between x 3 and x 4 can also be computed x 3 and x 4 would be same as x 4 x 3. So, that this is minus 2. So, this is minus 2. So, this is what is the covariance matrix between x 1 and x 2. So, we can use this particular term here as you can see that this covariance between the two need not be actually symmetric. So, this would imply the desired result that this is the covariance between these two terms that is equal to now A was given to be 1 2 and then the covariance matrix is what we required out here which is 0 2 1 minus 2 that multiplied by the transpose I am sorry this is a transpose out here this covariance of these two. So, B transpose. So, B was given by this and hence it is transpose is 1 2 minus 2 and minus 1. So, this is what is now solving this covariance between these two vectors.